Uh, we are Team G. My name is Kelly Evans with my colleagues Ryan Peterson, Robbie Willis, and TJ Cornet. And before we get started with our presentation for FC Dallas, the MLS team, I wanted to point out the statistic um, that we all found in our research. In our research that we presented was that 98% of fans that have attended the FC Dallas game are more likely to recommend that game to their friends and to their family. And so when we were sitting down discussing this, we were like, why is that? Why do people love to come to this, these games? Come on, Dallas, score a goal. It's very, really very simple. Kick the ball into the net, and I'll go freaking mental. I'm Dallas till I die. I'm Dallas till I die. I know I am. I'm sure I am. I'm Dallas till I die. As a result of this referral system. 
we feel that that benefits the, the support groups because that gets their name out there and also benefits us because we have the people coming into the stadium for single game tickets, which is the ultimate goal here. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Thanks, Robbie. All right, so uh, Robbie just you know, kind of went through our first tactic and strategy. Um, so before I kind of get into the second strategy, I, you know, I want to address a few um, things that obviously were you know, red flags that we saw in the data that we, uh, that we received for the case. Um, one of the reasons that people don't come to FC Dallas games in this room, the data said that it was too far out of the way or that Frisco was just too far to travel. Um, now, Frisco being too far to travel, that's obviously not a problem that we can really you know, that we can really fix. We can't really pick up and move where our games are or anything like that. Obviously not possible. But what we think we can tackle is the out of the way um, problem. We want to be what people are coming to. We want to be the premier event on a Saturday. We want to be on the way. Um, and what we want to do to do that is to create longer events. Um, right now, there's a culture, there's a culture difference between soccer and football. What do we think of when we think of Texas? What's the sport right now that rules Texas. Anybody have an answer for me on that one? Probably American football, right? <laughs> so, you know, I think about Allen High School right down the road. It's 20,000 seats in a high school stadium. That is absurd. I can't even imagine playing in front of 20,000 people. Um, but, uh, but obviously football is, you know, is the, is the culture down here. What we think we can do is we can merge that culture into the other, the other football culture, which is soccer. So uh, it's a little cheesy, but what we think we can do is bring football to football. Um, obviously, the second one being spelled a little bit differently. Um, but uh, so what we want to do is, is we want to create day-long events at these at these you know soccer matches that that you know entice a person like me, you know, an 18 to 34 year old man, to get up off his butt, you know, on the couch on a Saturday to come to a match. You know why? What you know? What would what would get me off the couch to come to a soccer match? I could watch it on TV. You know, I got you know plenty of beer in the fridge, and I got you know really really comfortable couch. Um, and we think that what we can do is we can create a you know incentive through through being able to go to a live event um, before. We want to create a day long event. Um, so what we want to do is we want to develop a tradition of tailgating. American football is all about tailgating. That's one of my favorite parts of American football. Besides the game, obviously, I love getting to the parking lot, sitting around with a bunch of my friends, you know, drinking some drinks, and throwing the football around. But why can't we do that at the FC Dallas games? Why can't we merge that culture that's currently not really there? Um, you know, we can make this, we can make this a day-long event for these people by bringing them out to the stadium a little bit earlier. Um, what we want to do to, to entice them to come out to the stadium earlier and to tell is we want to push a concert series on the 13 home Saturdays that we have in 2014. What this, these will be are concerts that start from three hours before the game, and then they end about 90 minutes before the match. So we don't alienate our supporter groups that are wanting to go into the game and hoot and holler, do their march to the stadium. And you know what? If we do that, if we bring these people to tailgate and stuff, they are more likely to go into the stadium a little bit earlier and spend another dollar on a hot dog or spend another dollar on whatever Legends is cooking up for us that game. Um, that's one of the biggest problems that pro sports teams have right now is getting people into the stadium earlier. We think that we can maximize our revenue in stadium through pushing this tailgate, um, this tailgate system, and these uh, concerts. So to go a little bit over more, or to go a little over on the uh, on the concerts, what it would be would be local bands playing on the 13 home Saturdays from three hours before the game to nine minutes before the match. Um, you'd have to have a ticket to the uh, to the soccer game to get into the concert. Which basically, you know, drives the, uh, the the people that are looking forward to this event to go ahead and buy our tickets. So we have that money in hand a little bit quicker. Um, but what we're going to do is, is have these concerts with local bands. You know, incentivize the fact that you can get there earlier and create a day long event. We think that through this we can push, you know, one to two thousand people just on by itself to the games um, on every soccer Saturday. So you may think, okay, thirteen concerts over the course of the season—that's a lot of money. You know, it's only like seventy-five thousand dollars to do this. But what we think we can do is we can—I think we can—we um, can have a title sponsor for this. We think Budweiser would be all over this. Um, we think that we could pitch them a forty thousand dollars title sponsorship um, to be the to be the face of this tailgating before uh, FC Dallas games. And uh, and really, with that, the cost would only come to about forty-seven grand for all thirteen. Um, home matches. Now you may be thinking, okay, there's there's 13 home matches that are on Saturdays, but there's 17 home games. Well, what we think is if we pitch this correctly through social media and stuff, we can create this tailgating atmosphere 
to, to start the season so that even when you know there are, it's a Wednesday night game or those four games that aren't on Saturday, we can still have those people there tailgating and getting excited for the game before. Um, so with that, um, I will turn it over to TJ Cornet that has our third uh, strategy. All right, thank you very much, Brian. So we talk about tailgating, and I mean, honestly, tailgating is one of the most fun things you can absolutely do. But there's one thing that I can think of that we're all thinking is way more fun than tailgating. Reading. Right? Right. Uh, I apologize to the first judges. You're going to hear the same jokes. So just bear with me and laugh along. Um, so uh, our third strategy is we're going to focus on utilizing and generating and uh, working on a new relationship with the younger fan base. Uh, according to the survey results we received, 90% of children of the parents that were surveyed were FC Dallas fans. So they want to go to the games. They're interested. Uh, they love soccer. And they, they want to be a part of it. Now, uh, in 1996, when FC Dallas first started uh, marketing and, and trying to figure out who their key demographic was, they targeted families. Uh, initially, there was some success, but they found out that these, these uh, families were kind of inconsistent. They weren't able to make games uh, from week to week. Um, and so they, 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 they moved on to a different demographic of the 18 to 34 year old males that we all have studied about. Um, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately actually, it's a, it's a good problem to have, those 18 to 34 year olds stopped being single, single game ticket buyers and moved on to uh, buying season tickets. So that's why there was a decrease. I think once again we can use this family market to once again increase our single uh, game uh, ticket sales uh, to once again boost that up. So how we're going to do this is we're going to uh, establish a reading initiative within the school. So kind of how this reading program will work, uh, we'll visit 51 schools in the Frisco area and the surrounding Dallas Elementary School area. Um, at those schools, we'll have a pep rally. We'll bring Tex Cooper, the FC Dallas mascot that everyone loves. Um, he'll be there. Uh, we'll pass out these bookmarks, and all these bookmarks will be different uh, lists where you can kind of uh, write down what books you've read. And on the very bottom, there'll, there'll be places for your parents to sign it. On top of this bookmark will be three sponsors, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, if you flip it over on the back side, there'll be a big FC Dallas logo and a schedule of home and away games so they know when to go uh, and when to watch on TV. Uh, so how, how the program will work is the top 25 students will receive a complimentary game ticket. Um, every, every, uh, there's 17 games, home games, so at every game there'll be uh, three schools per uh, game allowing these 25 students to go. And along with these complimentary tickets, there'll be four reduced price tickets uh, for them to give to their parents, family, friends, brothers, sisters, so on and so forth. Uh, another aspect of this program is that they'll be recognized on the field at the game that they do attend. So, um, little Timmy will go out there, he's, he's done all his, his reading, he's read Gone with the Wind or whatever else kids are reading these days. Uh, he'll, he'll go up there, go in front of everyone, and uh, get recognized. We believe that, A, this will bring more, this will be a, a greater incentive for parents, grandparents, friends, family to come. They want to see their, their young one uh, be recognized on the field. But secondly, uh, looking at kind of more long term, um, this will be great just because <coughs> that fan, that, that, that young child who's out there on the field will be an FC Dallas fan for life. They got to be on the field, they heard people cheering for them, they'll remember that moment for the rest of their lives. Uh, for an incentive for the schools, we plan on donating uh, $1,500. This is to really get the faculty and staff excited about our program. Um, they'll be very interested. Uh, they'll want to want to help out. That, that money can go to school or for, for books in the library, so on and so forth. Whatever, whatever these schools need, but um, that's a reason to get them excited. And we believe that because the faculty and staff will be excited, this program will work uh, and will get the students excited as well. So uh, as far as our sponsors, we kind of picked three that we thought would match really well with our school program. Uh, United Healthcare, Texas Health Resources, and of course the Y. Um, we were thinking maybe using Ye Yellowtail as a sponsor, but apparently wine and young children don't mix very well for whatever reason. Uh, so you guys need to laugh a little bit. <laughs> this is the worst comedy I've ever done. But um, uh, we decided that those three uh, different companies were kind of the uh, the most likely to, to be very successful, uh, especially when we're looking, you know, parents, every kid, ele every elementary school kid will be getting one of these bookmarks, and the parents will have to sign off of it. I mean, this is infiltrating their homes. We believe that this is a very lucrative offer for these uh, sponsors to uh, attach themselves to. So as far as some of the costs, we believe the bookmarks will cost the most. Once again, we are uh, projecting about 500 students per elementary school. This is from a government website um, in the Dallas area. 
So we're expecting about $15,000 for the cost of the bookmarks. Um, school events themselves, including gas and paying for uh, the mascot, will be about $7,650. So remember, we're doing 51 of these. Uh, and then lastly, the school donation of $1,500. Uh, we're going to ask our sponsors for about $3,000 each. This number comes from uh, similar programs that have been done in some minor league baseball teams and uh, some major league baseball teams as well that have attracted sponsors to uh, similar programs. And so for uh, total cost for us, we're thinking about $15,000 um, in total. But the, the important thing here to remember is um, our objective is for the 2014 season. We want to bring uh, single game ticket buyers to these games. And we believe that we'll be able to do that by getting the families there because their child is getting in for free and they want to recognize their child. But it also has a great, great impact on the future. We're expecting these kids to be fans for life. And one day they're going to grow up to be our future demographic. These kids are one day going to be the 18 to 34 year olds who are buying our uh, season game tickets. Um, so, you know, it's very important to, to keep an eye on the future as well as what we're currently doing. So at this point, I'm going to pass it off to Kelly Evans and bring us home. Okay, so like Brian mentioned earlier, we can't exactly pick up Toyota Stadium and move it to where the people are. So what we did is we gave everybody a reason to want to come out to SC Dallas and watch an SC Dallas game and get excited about it. With Robbie's referral program, you know, we're, we're infiltrating the support groups, really getting them involved, making them feel special, getting them to grow in their groups and getting more fans out there to support SC Dallas. With Ryan's initiative with the Budweiser tailgating, we created an all-day event, something to get up off your couch, make sure that you're there all day enjoying yourself with your friends. And TJ's reading initiative, you know, that taps into the family demographic that you know we've kind of not ignored for the past couple of years, but something that we can really hone in on and make those uh, fans, Dallas fans for life. And that will bring us from our 2000 base uh, up to 2000, up to 2000 more, totally 4000 in 2014. And the way we did that was there's going to be 700 per game from Robbie's referral program, about 1,000 per game with Brian's uh, Budweiser tailgate concert series, and then we have about 300 per TJ's reading program initiative. Those are very conservative numbers, mind you. We think that you know we could very well get more from the tailgating experience uh, than we have in the past, and we, this will all total about $75,000 um, given the sponsorship revenue and all that. And personally, I wasn't really a big soccer fan to begin with, um, but after taking the tour to the stadium, I got really involved, hearing about chance, you know, getting the support groups out there, and I kind of want to go to a game myself. I haven't been yet, but I will go. Um, but like I said earlier, those 98% of the people are going to be referring people back to SC Dallas games. So once we get the people there, we can sell them on the game. They're going to want to come back. And these new fans that we're bringing to the stadium, they're going to be Dallas fans until they die. Thank you. What questions you guys have? So, um, first off, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.